The Anchor Hawking Glass Corporation brings you Crime Photographer. Casey. Hi, fellas. Gee, I'm glad I got you two guys together. Look, I've got something very important to tell you. Well, go ahead. I know, but I, I just can't seem to remember it. Well, think, Tommy. I know. I, know. I, I still can't remember it. Well, go back to what you were doing when you last thought of it. That sometimes helps. Well, uh, I just had this glass in my hand. Glass. That's it, glass. Look, I just want you two guys never to forget this. Well, what? Go on, go on. Never forget that Anchor Hawking is the most famous name in glass. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is Tony Marvin. Every week at this time, the Anchor Hawking Glass Corporation of Lancaster, Ohio, and its more than 10,000 employees bring you another adventure of Casey, crime photographer, ace cameraman who covers the crime news of a great city. Our adventure for tonight, Blind Justice. Late afternoon, police headquarters, the private office of Captain Logan, Homicide Bureau, on opposite sides of a huge battered desk sit Logan and Casey. Their eyes are hard, their jaws set and tense. Before them is a problem. It's up to you, Casey. Wait, let me think, Logan. Let me think. Well, I've got to work this out. It isn't easy. Look, you're the wonder boy with a hair trigger brain. Let's have some action. Uh, okay, I'm taking that king you discarded and throwing down this juice. That's it! Gin rummy. You louse. I had a hunch you were saving juice. Hey, let's see your hand. Right. <laughs> Ain't that too bad. Kings, jacks, and ten spots. I may get 80 points and nuts to you. 80 plus 20 for gin makes me another game. All right. Figure up what I owe you, Canfield, and we'll call it a day. Oh, quitting. I can't take it when you lose. I... <laughs> I guess that's right, pal. It's nearly 5 o'clock, though. I'm taking Ann Williams to the theater tonight for dinner before well, that. What show are you going to see? Oh, we're going to see that new one opening at the Tivoli. press agent gave me ducats. Don't you ever pay your way? Well, how can I afford to when you win all my dough? <laughs> I got you good this time. Uh, excuse me. That's your phone. Captain Logan, homicide bureau. Who? Oh, hello. Yeah, I'll be here. What do you want to talk to me about? Okay, come on over. I'm about to receive a visit from a stinker. Oh? Any stinker I know? Bill Havens. Well, the criminal lawyer, huh? Lawyer criminal describes him better. Yeah, stinker's best, though. That rat smells of fixed juries, intimidated witnesses, and every variety of dirty double-cross known in the book. He was on the phone just now, huh? Yeah, I said he had to see me. He'll be here in a few minutes. Did you ever meet Milt Havens' wife? Yeah. Swell woman. You bet she is super swell. I've often wondered if she knows what kind of a skunk she's married to. She must. Well, not necessarily, Logan. Haven is a smooth guy. He probably puts on a good front at home. Besides, a woman who spends most of her time helping people and looking for the best in them, as Doris Havens does, well, she might not be able to really see the kind of a guy her husband really is. Ah, she does most of that good Samaritan stuff of hers because she is wise to Milt. It's to ease her conscience and to clean up the blood money he brings in. I see you don't know very much about Doris Havens, Logan. What do you mean? Well, for one thing, the dough she spends on that Third Street settlement house of hers is her own dough. She was worth over a million bucks when she married Milt Havens. I didn't know that. Well, of course not. You're just a cop, not a newspaper snooper like me. Why, that money was safely tied up in a trust fund. Or Milt would have gotten it away from her long ago to spend on other women. Hey, he goes for the gals, all right. Well, I'm going to get out of here before he shows up. I always feel better when I don't see Milt Havens. So long, pal. So long. All right. Hey, wait a minute. You owe me gin rummy dough. Uh, oh, I almost forgot. How much? Here's the score sheet. Read it and weep. Uh, ooh. You <laughs> really took me to the cleaners today, Logan. Look, I'm a little short. How about an IOU? Nuts. I want cash. Well, I got to eat, fella. Don't well, I? pawn your watch or your overcoat. Hmm. My pal. Why did I ever come in here in the first place? Oh, 2,560 points. Which comes to exactly $2.56. Oh, all right. 
life. Here. Joe hope Ann's got some money. Come in. Oh, thanks, Captain. Hello, Havens. Well, this is a pleasant surprise, my old friend Casey. Hi, Milt. I'll see you later, Logan. Oh, are you going? Yes, I got a date. Uh, Casey, as a newspaper man, you may be interested in my business with the captain. Oh, yeah? What is your business, Havens? Uh, captain, I want you to look at a note that was delivered to my office this afternoon. Oh, uh, first I'll read it to you and Casey. It says, uh, this is your death warrant, Havens. There's a slug in my gut with your name on it, and you're going to get it, special delivery, very soon. From a guy you did dirt to. That's all. Let me see that note. Yeah, sure, here. Yeah. Any idea who sent it? No, not the slightest. We attorneys who specialize in criminal defense practice make many enemies, Captain. You think this note's from some former client who's just gotten out of jail? Oh, well, it's a possibility. Uh... My thought in coming to see you, Captain, was that you might find fingerprints on this note. That I'll have you gone over. While we're investigating, you want a police bodyguard, of course. <laughs> no, thanks. I have a permit to carry a gun, and I'm better than the fair shot, and uh, <laughs> frankly, uh, I'm not worried. Okay. Oh, uh, Casey, uh, would you like to take a picture of me to run with the story of this death threat? It'll make good newspaper copy for you and uh, <laughs> good publicity for me. If the threatener really kills you, it'll be a good newspaper story, Havens, not otherwise. I gotta run along, Logan. I give Miss Williams my best, Casey. I'll I do that. Hope you enjoy that new show at the Tivoli tonight. Yeah, thanks, pal. So long. Oh, uh, Casey. What? You're uh, going to the Tivoli tonight. That's right, yeah. Well, so am I with Mrs. Havens. Uh, how about joining us afterwards for supper and a few drinks, eh? No, thanks, but. You. You'll be with Mrs. Havens? Yes. My wife has always liked you, Casey. She'd enjoy having you with us. Uh, your wife is aces with me. Well, thank you. It'd be a privilege to talk to her again. Oh, then it's a date? All right, yeah. We'll meet you in the lobby after the last act. Uh, partly for business reasons. Business reasons? Well, we could be lucky and get a story. The guy who wrote that note might be waiting outside of the theater for you with his gun. <laughs> There's Milt Havens and his wife, Annie. Oh, that uh, tall, yeah. gray-haired woman is Mrs. Right. Havens? Well, hello, Miss Williams. Casey, we've been waiting for you. Hello, Mr. Havens. Oh, Mr. Casey, it's so good to see you again. Well, it's good to see you, Mrs. Havens. Uh, Doris, you haven't met Casey's friend. This very pretty young lady is Miss Williams. Uh, my wife, Miss Williams. This is a pleasure, my dear. It's one for me, Mrs. Havens. I know about the wonderful work you've done through your settlement house, uh, let's and let's get I'm out very... of the theater, eh? Hey? My chauffeur will have the car waiting. We're taking you and Miss Williams to our home for a bite, Mr. Casey. Oh, that is swell. Thank you. Uh, Milton, dear. Oh, yes, Doris. When we get to the door, let me go out first and look around. The man who wrote you that note may be waiting outside. Oh, I shouldn't have told you about that silly note, Doris. Now, I'm in no danger. Uh, that's right, isn't it, Casey? I don't know. Well, you'd agree if you knew Bull, my chauffeur. He's an ex-heavyweight wrestler who also knows how to handle a gun. Oh, there he is with the car. Uh, everything all right, Bull? All okay, Mr. Havens. Take my arm, Milton, before we go out the door. Someone might be waiting. Someone Bull hasn't noticed. And if I'm very close to oh, you... Oh, all right. Now, you get into the car first. Very well. A man must humor these women, Casey. Yeah. Well, I'm safely inside. Come on, the rest of you. Let me help you, Mrs. Havens. Well, thank you, Mr. Casey. Annie? Oh, okay. Okay. Drive us home, Bull. Yes, sir. You uh, weren't lucky, Casey. No news story. My uh, threatening friend didn't come to the theater. I'm glad to be almost home, Milton. I've been so afraid every oh, minute. Oh, now stop worrying, Doris, please. Here we are, boss. Bull, look around before you open the car doors. I'll do that, Mrs. Havens. You won't do anything of the kind. We can see for ourselves that the street is deserted. Now, Doris, I'm getting tired of this scary stuff. Come on. Let me go out with you, Milton. I'll, I'll be close beside you. All right, Doris, but you're making me feel like a fool. Come on, Annie. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of dark places here. I, I wish... Casey! The guy with the gun! Havens, look I out! Don't you? shoot my husband! Don't! Get away from me, Doris! Oh, Mrs. Havens! 
I got him, Bull. I shot him. I pumped some lead in them, too, boss. He's finished. He got in two shots before you fellas got your guns out. The slugs caught your wife, Havens. Doris shot Mrs. Havens? I'm afraid. I'm afraid she's dead. Oh. She stepped in front of me. That's how it looked. Let's have a look at the guy who killed her. Okay. He's done for, Mr. Casey. The boss and I got her. Wait a minute. Let me see. Wait. His lips are moving. He's trying to talk. Yeah, let me at him. I'll finish him. No. Drop that gun, Havens. Drop no, let it. Let me go. No. They killed my wife. I have the right to... Hold him, Bull. Hold him. No, Bull. No, we can't let you do something foolish, boys. The man's no. murmuring something, Casey. Yes, I know. I'll lift his head and maybe then I... Okay. What is it, guy? What is it? Now, let, me oh. let me go, Bull. I'm going to finish him. Oh. He's finished now, Havens. The guy who shot your wife is dead. Dead. Did... Did he say anything, Casey? No. But his lips seemed to form two words. Two words? Double cross. I... I recognize this rat. I defended him several years ago and lost, and he went to prison. He, uh, he probably thought I'd crossed him up. Maybe he was trying to talk about the past. I wonder. Why, what do you mean? I've got a hunch, Havens. A nasty hunch. <laughs> Friends, instead of delivering a regular commercial at this time, allow me to read you this telegram that I just received. Lancaster, Ohio, quote, Anchor Hawking Glass Corporation scientists announce perfection, amazing new method of manufacturing oven glass in beautiful, rich, warm, opaque ivory. Development, result of years of research, is first of its kind in history. Makes possible introduction of completely new and far more beautiful line of oven glass called Ivory Fire King. Designed on simple classic lines, new Ivory Fire King oven glass resembles finest table china in appearance. New Ivory Fire King oven glass, guaranteed two years against oven breakage. Not yet available everywhere, sensational Ivory Fire King oven glass on display and sale soon throughout United States. Tell audience to watch for it, not miss it. It's the world's finest oven glass. William V. Fisher, President. Unquote. Mark up another first, another triumph. Ivory Fire King Oven Glass, a product of Anchor Hawking. The most famous name in glass. Okay, Grace, I'll, I'll look for it. Don't worry, I won't. Goodbye. <laughs> oh, these women. Uh, now, Casey, you and Miss Williams was about to tell me who the guy was who shot poor Mrs. Havens. Yeah. yeah. It was a rod hot Ethelbert. His name was Barker. He just finished a stretch for armed robbery, and Havens had been his lawyer when he was convicted. So he tried to kill Havens for letting him be convicted, huh? Yeah, apparently. Well, it, it's open and shut, Casey. His fingerprints were on that threatening note that Havens received. Well, that makes all the parts fit perfect. Not quite. Mrs. Havens was killed instead of her husband. Well, that was know. accidental. You say she jumped in front of him. No, no, Miss Williams says that. Well, well, she did jump in front of Havens. Well. I saw her do it, so did the chauffeur. And her husband was closest to her. I'm not believing anything that Havens guy says. Everything happened so fast, Annie. You can't be sure of what you saw. Neither can Bull the chauffeur. And I'm not sure of what I saw. I couldn't swear of what I think I saw. But I, I do think that Havens pushed his wife away when she tried to step in front of him. And I think I saw the gunman aim directly at her and not at her husband. I think Havens was behind the murder of his wife. That's what I Casey, think. Casey, you despise that man so much you can't be reasonable. Well, he tried to put another bullet in the killer, didn't he? He learned he was still alive and trying to talk. Well, he was half mad because of his wife's death. No, he did a no, perfect... no. I was afraid that guy would tell us that he'd been hired to kill Doris Havens. So Havens double-crossed him, shot him. So he'd never be able to give away the deal. Well, that's only your stubborn theory. Well, there's a good basis for it. Well... The way Havens set the stage in Logan's office with that threatening note. The way he got you and me for witnesses when he learned that we were going to the Tivoli. I'd have to swear that that ex-con Barker shot Mrs. Havens. That Havens shot him in self-defense. But, Casey, since that Barker's fingerprints were found on that threatening note... Well, that only builds my theory, Ethelbert. Oh. Sure, Barker was an experienced crook. 
He wouldn't have left incriminating prints on that note if he sent such a note. But if he was working for Havens, hmm, Havens could easily have gotten his prints on a blank sheet of paper and then have printed the note himself. Ah, oh, that is an angle. Well, that's all it is. How about motive, Casey? Havens had nothing to gain by his wife's death. Her money is in a trust fund that he won't inherit. If he just lost his taste for, well, divorce was simpler than murder, and a lot less dangerous. He wouldn't have dared to try divorcing her. Why wouldn't he have dared? Some of the toughest crooks in this town have a soft spot for Doris Havens because she'd helped so many of them. Helped them and their families. If it gotten around that Havens was giving her the double cross, he'd have had orders to lay off or else. Well, you still haven't a motive. I know, I know. I can't figure why he'd want to get rid of her. I just, I just feel that he did, that's all I... Oh, that's. Hmm. You know who Claudia Stafford is? Well, who doesn't? <laughs> Claudia Stafford is the heiress who has over ten million in her own name. Poor girl. What about her? I was thinking uh, her chauffeur comes in here occasional, and when he gets tight, he gets confidential with us bartenders. Well, the last time that happened, he told me that Claudia Stafford and Milt Haven was carrying a torch for one another. Huh? What? Yeah, he said there was meat and regular, Casey. Uh, why, Annie, hmm? with Havens free to become that dame's husband... Well, she has full control of her estate. Well, there's his motive. The Stafford doll. The same thought occurred to me while you was talking, Casey. Well, so what? There's still no evidence that Haven was behind his wife's murder. You've got to get evidence, Anne. If he hired Barker for the job... Well, Captain Logan can check up on Barker. He may have said or done oh, something... Oh, the cops will have a tough yeah, time on that might, kind of checkup, and they may get nowhere. A, a clue, uh, Barker was a crook... And associated with crooks. They're the only people he'd spill anything to, and they won't help the cops. No. Wait a minute, though. A few of them might help me. Fats Everett likes you, Casey, and you've done him some favors. Yes, I was thinking of Fats Everett, Ann. He's the gang boss of the West Side where Mrs. Havens had her settlement house. Yeah. I'm going over and have a talk with Fats Everett. <laughs> You've got quite an interesting theory about Mrs. Havens killing Casey. Yeah, I thought you'd find it worth listening to, Fats. You knew Mrs. Havens, and you know her husband. She was a swell woman. Yes. You spoke to the cops about your suspicions? To keep the record straight, Fats, I've told Captain Logan what I've told you. And? He said there was only one chance in a million of proving up on my idea. Mm -hmm. You didn't tell Logan or any other cop that you were going to talk to me? No. Okay. Now forget you've talked to me. I'll speak to some of the guys about this Barker Rod Hut. You'll hear from me later. Thanks, Fats. Think nothing of it, Casey. <laughs> Photography department, Casey speaking. This is Everett. But Fats, it's been two weeks since I talked to you. Have you found out anything? Some things take time, chum. I'm down to my joint. Lunch to meet a guy. So long. We're in the next room, Casey. I want you to meet you in there. You got it locked up, Fats? Mm-hmm. That's him. Get up, Dopey. You gonna let me out of here now, Mr. Everett, huh? You gonna... Close your trap to get told over. Yeah, I will, Mr. Everett. Don't hit me again. Now tell this guy what you told me. Yeah, okay, Mr. Everett, okay. It's about Barker. We was in Sturdy Gun, and we got sprung at the same time. And he was never saw at that mob place. Wait a minute, Barker told you that? Yeah. I was his pal. And he told me how Havens was gonna pay him a grand to knock off his wife. Barker got a hundred bucks of it in advance. Which was all he got, except some slugs from Haven's Gat. Uh, Barker bought hooch with a hundred, and him and me, and him and me, we got, we, we got pie right together. And, and that's when he told me about Haven's and the job that he'd been hired to do. And he wouldn't even tell a pal like me that unless we was full of red eye like that. Your theory was a hundred percent, Casey. Now, will you let me out of here, Mr. Abbott, and will you give me a bottle of red eye? Sit down. Shut up. Guy's an alcoholic, Fats. He's everything that's crummy. Keep him in the bug house. 
But he was Barker's pal. I've checked. Yeah. His testimony would be a... be worth a plug nickel in court. The next con, he's a rummy and a nut. He yeah. says Barker was drunk when he told him about Havens. Well, D.A. wouldn't even try for an indictment on the strength of his story. He's the best I could do for you, Casey. Yeah. And I believe his story. I've checked. Well, there's still no evidence against Havens. He's going to get away with what he's, what he's done. He killed a swell woman. Yeah, she was tops. She's dead and he'll go on living, living better than he ever has before on Claudius Stafford's dough. Guess that old gal, Justice, is blind. I try to think she is, Casey, for my own sake. But all guys like me are just a little bit afraid of her. Blind or not, she seems to get around. And to catch up with the fastest runners. We don't get away. Well, Havens is getting away. Yeah. Yeah, I guess you're right. You want to take this jerk to the cops or shall I turn him loose? Well, won't do any good, but I'll take him to the cops. Now get him out of here, then. All right, come on, no, you. No, don't take come me on. to the cops. Shut up. So long, Casey. Be seeing you one of these days. <laughs> So the cops and the D.A. wouldn't do nothing about that ex-con story, huh, Casey? There's nothing they could do, Ethelbert. Guy's worthless as a witness. Uh, it looks like Haven's committed the perfect crime when he can't be punished. Oh, I can't believe that. Well, I'm watching it happen, Ann. Hello, Casey. What? Here, Miss Williams. Oh, Fats, Miss Everett. Oh. Well, how are you, Ethelbert? Fine. I don't see you in here very often, Mr. Everett. <laughs> well, this isn't my part of town. Just happened to be up here on business when I remembered this Blue Note Cafe was your hangout, Casey, so I thought I'd drop in. Anything on your mind, Fats? Oh, nothing but a good time. There's a new night spot just opened in my district and got a part interest in it. Thought you and Miss Williams might like to pay it a visit tonight as my guests. Well, thanks, fellow. We just put the paper to bed, though, and I'm dead tired. Oh, so am I. Another time, Mr. Everett. A guy both of you know has reserved a table of my new club tonight. You two might pick up a story with pictures. Who's the guy? <laughs> I'd rather save him for a surprise. Join me? You, uh, tipping us to something, Fats? Maybe. Aha, uh -huh. that's enough, Casey. Let's go. My car's outside. You'll ride with me. There's my new nightclub, Miss Williams. We'll park here. Now, wait a minute. Your joint's almost directly across the street from the Third Street Settlement House, Fats. Yeah, you know, Mrs. Haven's place. Yeah. She did a lot of good in this neighborhood. Uh, now, come on. Let's get out of this bus. Now. Wait a second now. Till I light a fresh cigar. Oh, sure. <clears throat> what time you got, Casey? Uh, half past 12. 12.29, to be exact. Mm-hmm. That checks with my watch, so we move... Both must be right. <laughs> Just the shank of the evening. <laughs> Let's go. Got your camera, Casey? Yeah, sure, I got it. I think you two will get a kick out of my new club. They're drawing some of the most important people in town, Casey. Yeah, well, look, suppose you break down now and tell us who the guy is you spoke of. Guy? Yeah, the one we know who's reserved a table. Might be good for a story. Oh, oh. <laughs> It's the mayor. The mayor? Oh. <laughs> We're joining his party. <laughs> you know his honor, Miss Williams. He's always good for a story. Uh-huh, and it won't hurt your new club if we run something about him being there. <laughs> That's right. Uh -huh. <laughs> we can use some free publicity. And huh? Milt Havens just came out of that club. Yeah. Hey, the car across the street is fire at Havens. Oh, it's getting away. I'm getting a picture of this. Up fat. Yeah. What's the idea? I'm sorry I bumped your arm, Casey. I would have gotten a picture of that murder car, Fats, if you hadn't bumped my arm. the car's gone now. It's around the corner. Never mind the car. Let's have a look at Havens. Hi. He's dead, Casey. Bullets almost cut him in two. Here's a picture you really wanted, Casey. The dead body of a rat. I'll take it, Fats. Huh. And you brought me down here to take pictures of the mayor. <laughs> We'll join the crowd of the Blue Note in just a moment. No deposit, no return. 
Get it, friends? Those four words, no deposit, no return, are sweeping the United States like wildfire. They mean that you can now buy your favorite brand of beer and ale in a new kind of glass bottle, a lightweight, compact glass bottle that requires no deposit and never has to be returned to the store. So say goodbye to beer bottle bookkeeping. Tempties piling up on the corner, waiting to be hauled back to the store. Yes, indeed. The new Anchor Glass one-way, no-deposit bottles can be discarded just as any other food container after you've used the contents. And they're light to carry home, take up less space in your refrigerator. Now, you, of course, prefer your beer and ale in clean, sanitary glass. Americans have for more than 100 years. So demand your favorite brand of beer or ale in the sparkling new Anchor Glass one-way, no-deposit bottle. Product of Anchor Hawking. The most famous name in glass. You think Fats Everett arranged for Haven's execution, Casey? I don't know, Ethelbert. I don't know. It's possible that he'd fix things so Havens would be called out of that joint on some pretext at half past 12 exactly. Fats gorillas were in that car waiting for him. Well, we can't prove that, Casey. No, Annie, there's no evidence. We can't prove it. I've told the cops everything I know, but Fats covered every angle just like Havens did. He didn't even lie to us about the mayor. His honor was in that club. Fats ever thought Mrs. Havens was a fine woman. Yeah, but even so, Fats was entirely wrong if he took the law into his own hands. Mm, I guess that old gal Justice will get him, too, in the end. That's right. She never fails. That bandage on her eyes is just a gag. You uh, didn't think that a few days ago. Mm, uh, well, I've had good reason to change my mind. You never can tell about women. Uh, what? Women? Justice is supposed to be, ain't she? A woman? Oh. Well, it's getting harder to tell about them all the time. Especially with this here new look. It ain't justice, Casey. Why, if them skirts get much longer, us men might as well be blind. Annie, <clears throat> I think we're approaching a change of subject. I um, can see that. Enjoy yourselves, gentlemen. Good night. Crime Photographer, starring Stotts Cotsworth as Casey, is written by Alonzo Dean Cole. It is brought to you each Thursday by the Anchor Hawking Glass Corporation, makers of Fire King Oven Glass. Anchor Glass Containers... Anchor Caps and Closures. All products of Anchor Hawking, the most famous name in glass. is directed by John Dietz and is based on the fictional character of Flash Gun Casey created by George Harmon Cox. Original music is by Archie Blyer and the program features Miss Jan Minor as Anne and John Gibson as Ethelbert. Herman Chittison is the Blue Note pianist. Crime Photographer, under a new sponsorship, will be brought to you next week, same time, same station. Be sure to listen in. And friends... This completes the current series of Crime Photographer programs under the sponsorship of the Anchor Hawking Glass Corporation. Our thanks to you listeners for your local support and to all those who've had a part in making these programs so interesting and exciting. This is Tony Marvin saying good night for the Anchor Hawking Glass Corporation of Lancaster, Ohio, with offices in all principal cities of the United States and Canada. This is CBS Columbia Broadcasting System.